Good evening, everyone, and welcome to your planning committee. Members, first of all, if you want to remove your coats and you haven't done so, please feel free to do so. Don't sit there in the suit. We stop at your couple And ties and shirts. <laughs> <laughs> but not too much, yeah. Uh, minutes, is it your wish I sign them as correct record members? Great. Yes, you Great. Thank you. Apologies for absence. Apologies for seeing the councillors, which will all go to the other head of the debate. Okay, it's the full house otherwise. the wires. Okay, members' interest, disclosable interest. Councillor Irving Swift. Yes, for the uh, fourth planning application DA 2018 0282, uh, I saw the properties that is next to mine, so I will have to leave the room. Okay, thank you. Any others? If not, don't remember you. Don't forget. Do remember rather. You can um, always <coughs> disclose them at the particular time. Um, we've got to come to school. Uh, yeah. Which one? Um, I think your mobile devices to silent. We used to pay five pounds if your phone goes off, or you used to, um, but now we charge ten pounds because of inflation. <laughs> so if you want to pay ten pounds, um, leave your phone on. <laughs> right? The proceedings are being recorded. Speakers will have three minutes and they'll be asked to wind up. You'll hear a tone. And that is the only opportunity for you to speak. So. Please don't interrupt otherwise, I'm sure you won't. And as for clapping, hissing, booing, cheering, and standing up and waving your arms, please don't do that. You'll see officers talking at the same time, perhaps, as you're talking. Uh, the reason they're talking, it looks bad, man, is but we're trying to find the answers to the points you're making. Um, update on performance, you get that regularly anyway. Um, there is one application which has been um, approved and the delegated powers, and that's the application in Malt. So we won't be dealing with that, it's already been dealt with. We go to the first application, which is in Sibatov Solby. <coughs> Isolated part of the district, Solvay. This is part of a former air, uh, World, World War II airfield. Uh, consequently, it has some historical buildings on it, although, as you said, the photographs have like, deteriorated a bit in the last uh, 70 odd years. Um, the proposal before us is another paragraph 55 House. As you know, that's paragraph 55 of the National Planning Policy Framework that uh, sets out criteria for houses that can be allowed as an exception to normal planning policies that don't generally allow new houses in open countryside. And there's a number of criteria set out in paragraph 55 that they ought to meet. Um, um, so effectively what um, what we've done is we've consulted with open the design people, as you know we use open on these schemes to give them the year and to assist and they resulted in a tweaking of the scheme. Um, as you'll see from the plans and the photographs, it sits in a heavily wooded area, which has been naturally wooded, as I understand it. It's been taken over by ash trees up to the wall, and they've self seeded and just generally uh, taken the place over. Although, group tree preservation order has now been placed on those trees, but um, the idea is the management of the trees will take place as well as the actual development. And as you'll see there, it's a concept we've seen before now some of these paragraph 55 houses where you get two um, effectively pitch roof long sections that could almost be barn like in appearance splayed apart with a central link between them and uh, we've done one at Crete I know um, which was very similar to this in that type of form although the materials and the setting were quite different 
So, um, as I say, it's obviously conjured policy, but it's measured against paragraph 55. So, we have the latest advice from the open design review panel on the amended plans, which is now in the lab representations, and as you'll see, they are supporting our proposal. And on that basis, uh, Chairman, we're happy to and we're recommending approval. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Um, no speakers. Local member, Councillor Irving Swift. Yes, well, as uh, Mr. Surfield said, uh, it's uh, paragraph 55, so you like it or you don't. Um, but it's observable to, despite being big, it will not be seen. Or that is my understanding that the wooden, so the wooden, uh, the wood around it will still be the major feature because it's it's a wonderful part of the the ward and uh, I would not like a house to dominate but I'm satisfied uh, with open and um, I don't think we sh it's a question you like it or you don't and I would not like to waste any member time. Uh, it's. It's a paragraph 55, and I agree with the fiscal report. Thank you. Do you have a second? Thank you. Would you like to speak now on it? No, it's fine. Thank you. Councillor. Thank you, Chairman. I just wanted to say to members that it's not very often that we have the opportunity to, to leave a mark like this mm -hmm. on our district. The design is is very sympathetic to the surroundings, yeah. which I know quite well uh, for a number of reasons. And uh, I'm fully supportive of this application, too. Thank you. If there's no other speaker, then no, there is another speaker. Councillor Richie. Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Irving Swift says that it's a wonderful part of the, of the world. Can I ask if that means that she has been in it? And that other people are able to go and make use of that particular bit of the countryside. One of the photographs shows uh, a farm gate leading to a track. Is that is that an area that um, that is <coughs> open to the public or could be open to the public? Or the right so um, uh, uh, that seems I feel there's that one. I mean. I think Chairman is language private, but I think there is a public footpath. Yes, there is a public footpath. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, in, in, in that case, I, I, you know, I again question why, if you have got what, why, by all accounts, I haven't been there, but, but, but reading the papers, is an exceptionally attractive um, bit of ground. It is there, it could either be used as a, an amenity for the entire community to be able to, um, I'm not suggesting that particular site there that I would agree could be improved upon. But I, I just object to the, the, the idea that um, just because people can pay large amounts of money to expensive and clearly very good architects come up with designs that can effectively take over bits of the country, but therefore make it inaccessible to, to future generations. And for that reason, I don't think I can, you know, I could vote for that on the grounds. I just don't see that there is no need for it in terms of providing accommodation. And I just see that that somehow reduces the options that um, there may in the future be for this, you know, for the use of that particular plot of ground. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Ritchie. Councillor Ritchie. Well, uh, two things. Uh, I know it's a wonderful part of the world, not that I go through that uh, airfield, but because um, uh, you have a public footpath and you have a road, uh, and it's very rural. But also, I would remind uh, Mr. Ritchie, that Councillor Ritchie, that we are not here to argue about every private, it's a private part, it's a private land, and we should see the planning application as a private planning application, not uh, another way. So uh, please stay with planning application and planning matters, thank you. Uh, yeah. through, through you, Chairman, the public right of way is shown on the site location plan as the purple line running along the bottom edge. Yeah. So there is no public right of way, it's private land. Yeah, 
Yeah, he did that on the border. But he did it's on the border. Councillor Robinson. Thank you, Chair. I know this area very well for at least 60 years. My grandparents used to live in Sibbers Dock, and uh, I recall having to drive around the perimeter track of the old airfield just to get the Sibbers Dock on the rear and the road to go through the middle. Um, I don't see it as a wonderful area at all. I see it as a derelict airfield, quite frankly, and uh, I think uh, <laughs> what's going to happen here is uh, an improvement. <laughs> Thank you. We have a proposal that the application be approved, which has been seconded. All those in favour, please show. Those against? The application is approved. <coughs> Next application is. Um, 0031 and Tim Clipson. Two speakers, Mr. Price from the House Council. Yeah, I'm speaking against the uh, application. Um, well, the site in question lies approximately one mile from Clipston and is special. It comprises gently undulating pasture with views to, to the east from Clipston, and part of its western and southern boundaries adjoin an ancient monument, namely Clipston Medieval Settlement, and with the site itself having a considerable amount of ridge and furrow. In other words, unspoiled countryside with considerable heritage importance. The proposal for rearing birds on a large scale does not sit comfortably with any agricultural use. There is intended to rear 45,000 partridges and 25,000 pheasants annually to be housed in 245 structures designed for the 70,000 birds. Now, such an extreme use, in our view, is inappropriate in such a rural and unspoiled area of countryside. It can only have a detrimental effect on the character and appearance of the locality, particularly in the context of the adjoining ancient monument. To substantiate the rural situation point, the road serving the site is a single track road with no designated passing places. It serves for the most part traditional farm accesses. 
Now, there have been references to passing bays being requested and imposition of planning conditions, but this is a fundamental and costly point, a point not to be addressed by conditions, in our view, but fully, fully considered before any planning application is discussed. Clipston Village is close by. There is considerable concern in respect to potential smells from much of the type of intensive farming. The planning officer's report says any smells problems might arise in future should be address addressed to the environmental officer who can investigate. 70,000 defecating birds. There's going to be a lot of guano. And, uh, you know, this is a problem in the making. And no older consultative report has been provided. In my view, a fundamental omission in the context of such an intensive user and the proximity of clips. Now, the planning officer report acknowledges the sensitivity of the area, referring to the views from the surrounding areas, in G, for example, the ROC uh, observation point, which is a key viewpoint on the Nas Nasby Battlefield Trail. However, the proposed positioning of the bird's housing structure in a less prominent part of the site to help the view problem is tantamount to sticking a plaster on a major wound. The planning application is unsuitable in the first place. It's too close to an ancient monument, has inappropriate road infrastructure, infrastructure services, a potentially serious smell hazard, and will have a detrimental effect on the character and appearance of the locality. These reasons have to be considered cumulative, cumulatively, not individually. And finally, the submitted plan is wrong. The officer's report, page five, says the proposed agricultural building has been excluded. It is not, and it's still included in the plan. So we suggest that the application is rejected. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next speaker is Miss Ferris. Ferris, who is the agent? Thank you, Chair, for the opportunity to speak. We fully endorse the officer's recommend recommendation to approve this proposal. Members will note that this recommendation to approve has arisen from sustained and positive engagement with council officers throughout the application process. We note the concerns of the parish council and some of the neighbours, however, however, wish to assure the committee that the proposed development is not an environmentally damaging activity and in will no way harm local immunity. Concerns about adverse smells are understandable, but this perception is not applicable to game farms. <coughs> game farms need to be well maintained. It is in the interests of the welfare of the birds to ensure that they are reared in well-drained and clean conditions to prevent disease. The birds protect the birds are protected from predators until they are sold, which necessitates the need for the temporary lightweight pens. They are wild, and therefore the density of birds on site is kept low. The applicant is an experienced game farm operator and farmer, having been in the game farm business for over 10 years. It is important to recognise that whilst the proposed game farm operates, the majority of the application site will remain as grazing pasture for sheep and therefore will remain in its current agricultural use. It is also important to highlight that the game farm location will rotate around the field each year. I must stress that in no way will heavy machinery be used during the wet weather. Further to this, it is entirely acknowledged by the applicant that effective drainage is critical. The game farm activity itself is low key and the impacts are therefore low. It is not the applicant's, in the applicant's interest to damage the ridge and furrow on site or to rut any of the ground. Ultimately, the field could legitimately be used for arable farming, which could itself result in significant damage. We therefore believe that this proposal for a game farm and retention of pasture will better protect and preserve the ridge and furrow on site. We have responded to concerns from the Highways Authority and demonstrated that the proposed development will not give rise to any adverse impact on highway safety. The Highways Authority have therefore confirmed that they do not object to this proposal. We have also responded to the concerns of the Conservation Officer and County Archaeologist. Again, no objections have been raised from these statutory consultees. Further to this, no concerns were raised by Environmental Health for this specific activity. The applicant is mindful of local concerns about introducing this use. However, we are confident that the site can be operated responsibly and safely, and the applicant will remain a good neighbour to local residents. It is a form of development which is wholly in compliance with both, with both local and national planning policy, namely Save Local Plan Policies, GN2, E1, S, is it 
2, S10, BN5 and R2, and paragraphs 32, 128, 109, 131 and 132 of the National Planning Policy Framework. And further to this, there were no technical reasons for, to prevent Planning Commission from being granted for this development. We therefore ask that the committee endorses the officer, officer's recommendation to approve, subject to the conditions outlined in the report. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Lee Smith, local member. Well, I would say it's also a wonderful part of my ward. <laughs> Another one. You, your grandparents live far away. So, um, but um, I, I can see both sides of the argument. I can uh, appreciate uh, the anxiety from the villager about the smell. So uh, before I speak longer, uh, would it be possible to give a temporary planning application of three years? Is that something that, because it's <coughs> all temporary accommodation of birds, so to see, instead of giving it for a long time, could we revisit and do just give a temporary accommodation for, yeah. for that business? We, yeah, I was going to say, normally we would say no, if it's proper buildings, but obviously in this case they have removed buildings but they obviously come at the cost yes so this is the problem we've got the person buys those buildings and they've got the cost and then their permission doesn't carry on you know they're disadvantaged in that sense so i don't obviously know whether it's possible for them to uh, hire them or rent them or lease them or whatever but i mean yes in theory because it's not sort of been attached to the ground and it's going to move around i would have said if, we, if, the, if the ground isn't changing very much it is the kind of thing you could say well let me do it for three years and see what happens, but obviously that's on the understanding that they, you know, they may well have an expense in, in buying the things and not been able to get rid of them, shall we say, after three years. Mm. Well, uh, um, thank you so much for that clarification. I think it would be um, a good step, so it will mitigate if, if what the applicants say is valid. The village has time to establish good contact and, and see if it's worth and uh, if there is a huge problem with with that planning application, at that point, the environment and the sense on everybody would have been, and, and the village could also have its say. So for me, if we could add. Well, I was just going to, sorry, just getting yeah. off there. The other problem, of course, is you've got the condition about passing by. Yes. Now, obviously, it won't be reasonable to expect them to do that no. if they're going to not have permission after three years. So I think it just needs to be clear that passing by probably aren't going to happen if it's a temporary. Well, I, I, I think um, I will let the committee decide, but if it's a temporary planning application for three years, in that case we defer the passing bay and see how it works, because how much traffic they are going to generate, we don't. I don't think it would be that huge, and it would just be for, for that farm. And as uh, a village, and they will have time to establish a good relation with the village or not. And in three years, and maybe they will not want to carry on doing that or doing it somewhere else. But it will give, I think, Cliff Clifton a bit more uh, time to, to put a case stronger if it doesn't work. And if it works, they might not have any problem in three years and carry on. That's a Robson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, 70,000 birds, it sounds a lot, doesn't it? It sounds like a lot of guana. Consider, though, that um, if you decided to become a, a chicken farmer and raise two to three million hens, you wouldn't even need planning permission for that, would you? No. Um, so, basically, although I've no objection to the idea of um, temporary planning permission, I don't know whether we can actually do that or not. But um, I, I see no real reason why this, which is clearly yeah. an agricultural, well, clearly a, a countryside use of land, if it is an agricultural, shouldn't go ahead. I have to say, if it helps at all, uh, my father um, died very young, and my mother remarried, and she remarried a man with a game farm that's probably within 15 miles of here. I won't say where it is. On the game farm, which included one big paddock, which was right next to the house and right on the edge of the village, um, was a couple of ponds as well, which I fished at the time. 
and I have to say, at no period was that I, did I ever smell a pheasant nest. And I can assure you that that is so. And I'm not, I'm just telling you out of interest. And, and that they did keep a few thousand pheasants, no partridges. They're not, they're not there for long. They go out, they go out anyway, and, uh, yeah, and sure. the poor things get shot. Well, they don't get shot, however you look at it. But I didn't notice at any time over the years any smell whatsoever. And that's the truth. Castro and Swift. So, well, could I make a proposal with a temporary accommodation, uh, a temporary planning permission for three years, re renewable, if there is no. Um, yeah, I was going to say at the end of the three years, obviously, I'll have to come back yeah. to make it permanent yeah. if that's what they're seeking yeah. to do. Yeah. This is without any um, passing. Without any passing. Without passing. Passing. Do you have a second? Yes. No, you don't. <laughs> Okay, uh, somebody else put their hand up over there. Yes. Thank you, Chair. I mean, why I say this, I can understand, I can understand the, uh, the village being a little bit concerned about this, but I think the point's already been made, and I'll make it again, that other agricultural uses could easily cause the issues that the villagers are raising. Um, yes, 70,000 birds sounds a lot, but it is, it is in, a, in an open environment. We're not talking about sheds here, we're not talking about intensive farming. Um, you know, I think it brings I think it brings industry to the countryside. I think it's the right thing to do. As an agriculture use, all sorts of things could be done on that land which would appear detrimental to the village and uh, and I think this is a good use of it and uh, I see no reason why it can't go ahead. Thank you Councillor Wesley. Councillor I have a couple of questions <coughs> that you, the business of your experience, may be able to answer. Um, you, you, you say that 70,000 is not a great number of birds. I, I find it very difficult to envisage what 70,000 pheasants look like. Um, I'm rather ignorant of this sort of business. What, what happens to these? These are, these are pheasants that are being reared. They are being reared, they are at some stages in captivity, in some stages they are foraging locally, or, or are, they entirely, are they entirely maintained within this, 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 this particular site? I don't know what this applicant wants, wants to do with, but normally they're reared, as you say, then they go, they're sold to shoes that buy them throughout the country. But they would not be shot in a local area. You wouldn't be 70,000. Not normally. They normally go to different yeah, 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 shoots yeah, yeah, throughout the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not aware that that's what this applicant wants yeah. to do, but that's normally what happens. I'm, 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 still, okay. I'm surprised that kind of the, mean, looking after, even if looking after means only bringing in good supplements, that number of birds. I, uh, is, is there any stress in the application? Sorry if I've missed it. Of any sort of backup stores or things like that, from what I can see, it's all places where the birds are going to be kept. There must be staff, there must be <coughs> an office needed that keeps the records of sales and everything else. Um, I did not know where that was. If these, if these questions were, I felt were, you know, there were answers to them. And if Councillor Irving Swifts. Uh, if a proposal is still on the table, um, in this event, I'd be happy to second it. Okay. It failed earlier on. It, it failed because it did not find a secondary. That's right. Well, we've moved on since then. Correct, sir? That failed because um, we've moved on. They so can't just second it <coughs> sort of ten minutes later. Um, to we weren't dealing with that. Um, uh, hold sorry, on a second. I've got, I've got two more speakers before you. Sorry. But I'll, I've got you down. Councillor Robertson. That's me. I think it's me. Uh, um, Councillor yeah. Um A couple of things I would say here. The um, uh, pheasants are, are reared for part of the year. This isn't a full 12 month operation. Um, so I'm. I'm to be precise, it's probably three, four months, that sort of range of time. So the majority of the year, there are no pheasants on, on the land. 
Um, that would be my one point I'd like to make. The second point um, I'd like to make is that uh, I'd agree with the speaker on my right, that you're bringing business to the countryside, there are other alternatives, and um, for, um, for that reason, I'm going to propose that we approve this. And I would also add to that, uh, for Councillor Ritchie, um, you uh, would like to know what 70,000 pheasants look like, and uh, my answer is they're mostly the same, Councillor. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but I would like to propose that uh, we accept the approval. Did you have a second? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll let um, Councillor Chandler do it, because I'm going down on the list to speak, and then it's Councillor Proust afterwards. Councillor Chandler. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, in a way, I'm surprised this application is necessary because I don't see this as a vast change from agricultural use personally, but if those are the rules, then those are the rules. Um, I do have experience of, of, of this kind of business, uh, but not in this county, and uh, I can uh, do my best to reassure people that it doesn't cause any of the problems that you've listed as being potential problems, and I'm happy to second the proposal that we grant a permission to him. Thank you, Councillor Chandler. Councillor Frost. I was just um, I think it's a way of um, dealing with Councillor Irving Swift's point, as well as uh, the point that um, Spurs was made about uh, the expense of things that, that goes into these things. Um, uh, <coughs> am I, um, am I, is it a protocol for me to, uh, to make the same proposal as Councillor Owen Swift, but uh, for four we years... We have a proposal on the table at the moment. Okay, so it's the, that, that supersedes that, or can I make a... Okay, am I allowed to make a, a, a new one, the same as Councillor Owen Swift, but uh, bearing in mind that hasn't that can get seconded, I make it for four years. Um, um, uh, an amendment. As a, as, sorry, that's an amendment, so an amendment to, to that for four years. Um, you, can, you can propose an amendment for four years um, without any passing bays, yes? Do you have a second now? Okay. Thanks. Councillor Ritchie. Right. Do you wish to speak on the, um, on the amendment or not? No, because it's the same as uh, uh, Councillor Ritchie has already said. Well, well, we, to, to well, we will down. be voting on your amendment first. <laughs> so right, so you it's, have, it's, you it's, have it's a chance to speak on it. Okay. Um, so it's, it's to grant temporary permission for, for four years. Um, so a, a permanent application would have to be made after that time. That, that would give. Um, uh, an opportunity for, for things to, to pan out to see. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know enough about this specifically, but there's a lot of work's gone into it. I've heard parish council speak. Okay, well, as I've gone back to the proposal, we go straight to the vote. Those in favour of four year temporary use, please show. Three. three. Those against? Three. Four. Three. So that is lost. So we go back to the original. Uh, proposal, huh? which is that the application be approved. All those in favour, please show. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So those against? One, seven, so the application is approved. Application is 0235 and it's in Welton. Thanks, Chairman. Uh, application site sits within a small residential development dating back to the uh, 1980s. Um, it's sort of a, it's served off on a dock below the estate to be fair, sort of on a plank layout. Uh, it's beginning to mature, shall we say. Uh, to the west is a, uh, an area TPO, as you can see on the plan. Uh, the property in question is a one and a half story dwelling uh, with a in floor form uh, and the proposal is to uh, extend to the side uh, to effectively create sort of a T-shape uh, with some further alterations to the, the roof line including the addition of a new dorm room where there's a, a roof light uh, and reconfiguration of the entrance to the, uh, the house itself. Uh, in our view, having assessed the proposal Judge it to be acceptable in regard to the supplementary design guidance on design class extensions and in terms of the immunity of surrounding properties. Um, and although we have taken note of the concerns of the parish council on balance, we recommend the application be approved, Chairman. Thank you, Aaron. Um, no local member here. So, members. <coughs> well, 
need somebody to say something. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, Chairman. It's hot. Hello, Chair. Councillor James. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I've read the Planning Officer's report on this, and I must say that uh, I agree with the officer in this particular case. I can't see any valid planning ground for rejecting this application. Uh, it, the uh, site can accommodate both the existing property, of course, and the extension without any detriment or detrimental effect on, on any adjoining properties. And uh, I recommend that uh, we approve this application. Thank you. Um, you're recommending an approval? That's a proposal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a second? No. I'll take Councillor Robertson because he asked next and then it's Councillor Wesley next. I was the only going to say, uh, Chair, that um, yes, I'd like to second that because uh, I don't see it as, as in any way um, contentious. Thank you. Councillor Wesley? Yeah, I don't want to say much more really. I mean, I'm seeing it that although the parish council aren't only really happy, but uh, I also know that the neighbours haven't made any comments. Um, so no reason why Okay. I have a proposal the application will be approved. It's been seconded. All those in favour? Please shut. Those against? I think that's a full house. All right. The application is approved. Application 0282 and it's in Harvey. Thank you, Chairman. Um, members may recall this site uh, got planning permission on appeal after it came to committee and there was a quite lengthy discussion about whether the site lay within the confines of the village or not, so the members decided to refuse it again because we just introduced policy R1 where obviously we were trying to restrict the number of houses in the rural area. Um, Nevertheless, it got granted planning permission on appeal, and the scheme that was allowed on appeal um, was very similar to the house that's already next door, the two houses that are next door, back to their pair of cottages, which look very similar. So that is effectively the fallback position, in inverted commas, if you like, that that has been granted permission on appeal, that could be done. So the principle of residential on the site is now agreed. Um, but what we now have before us is a completely um, different alternative, which is one modern, modernist architecture design, as you obviously see from the drawing house on the site. And uh, I suppose it's another one of these which is very subjective, it's kind of split opinion in the village. And um, as you'll see there in the, in the report, some people don't like it, some people think it's all right. Um, and it's very, very difficult really to say who's right and who's wrong in the sense that it's a very subjective judgment. Um, overall, concerns were expressed that it might have an impact on the listed building, which you see sitting there on top of the hill. I think we are satisfied that it doesn't, looking at the various views <coughs> and comments we've had from the conservation officer. Um, in terms of does it fit on the site and does it, does it meet amenity standards, I think uh, the answer is yes, we think it does. So, really, we're down to design. Um, which is something we talked about earlier on the uh, paragraph 55 house and the, does it kind of fit in well with the surrounding prospects of the issue. Um, on balance, as I say, we think that uh, bearing in mind the advice of the national um, policy framework about not trying to stifle innovative design, we think it is interesting, um, it is different to what's around it, but we don't think that's sufficient reason to refuse it, but obviously people might have a different view. Along that basis, we recommend it for approval anyway, Chairman. Thank you. Thanks, Keith. Three speakers. First of all, Mr. Irving Swift, who's against the application. <coughs> Chairman, committee members, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to address the committee. My name is Charles Irving Swift, the owner of Bosworth House, the Grade 2 listed property situated diagonally opposite the site of the proposed dwelling. I've been asked to speak to the committee on behalf of five other owner-occupiers of properties on our lane, as well as on my own account. I wish to state unequivocally that we are unanimous in our position, our opposition to the construction of the proposed dwelling on the land adjacent to the cottage Oxenden Road. 
We are simply of the view that it is the wrong design for this particular location. We have five key objections. First, the proposed design deviates clearly from the village design statement, which states that new development should be sympathetic with existing housing and be in keeping with the rural location. Sympathetic with the existing housing? Hardly. There are no other flat-roofed residences in the village. In keeping with a rural location? Not in the least. The proposed dwelling might be in keeping with coastal properties on Miami Beach, but not with a village setting in rural Northamptonshire. Second, the proposed design does not comply with the conditions specified in the appeal decision of the 12th of January 2016 for the previous application. The decision states that the revised proposal incorporates an acceptable design of the built form compatible with the adjacent cottages, including brick facing to the ground floor with render above and a slate roof and chimneys to the front elevation. By no stretch of the imagination could one claim that the proposed design is compatible with the adjacent cottages. Where is the brick facing with render above? Where is the slate roof and chimneys to the front elevation? Third, the proposed design will have a detrimental impact on the approach to our Grade 2 listed property. It will be clearly visible from our gateway, orchard and front garden, especially in the winter months when the trees are bare. Chairman Bosworth House plays a key part in the efforts of the National Garden Scheme to raise money for Macmillan Nurses, Mary Curie and the Hospice Movement. Just last Sunday we had over 100 visitors to the garden. Why do they come? Because they want to visit the garden of a traditional Northamptonshire farmhouse in a rural setting. This setting will certainly not be enhanced by the appearance of a modernist construct within view of the garden. Quite the contrary. Fourth, there is a question of invasion of privacy. The proposed house, as currently designed, incorporates large expanses of plate glass in the front and rear elevations. This is a particular concern for the owners of adjacent properties who fear that the inhabitants would have unfettered views over their houses and gardens, thereby intruding on their privacy. Fifth, we contest the notion of a single dwelling on the site. Approval was originally given on appeal for two semi-detached cottages, subject to the aforementioned design considerations. This made eminent sense. Villages like Ardingworth have a dearth of affordable housing for younger people, who are otherwise being forced out of the local community. What we do not need is yet another executive home which will be out of the financial reach of the younger households. Finally, I note from the planning officer's report that representations in support of the proposal have also been received from two other local households and from the owner of the adjoining cottage and land opposite the site. These representations should be heavily discounted by the committee. The two local households are not situated on the lane where the house will be built and therefore would not suffer any direct impact from the project. As for the owner of the adjoining cottage and land opposite the site, the party in question does not reside in the village, has no interest in the environmental consequences of the development, and was the former owner of the site that is subject of the application. For the above reasons, I submit that the proposed dwelling, in an overtly modernist style, is wholly inappropriate, is bad for the village, bad for the lane, and bad for the neighbouring properties. I therefore request on behalf of the owner occupiers of neighbouring properties that the committee recognise this project for what it is, ill-conceived and inconsiderate, and reject the preposterous proposal outright. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Thomas of Parish Council. Hi, oh, thank you for letting me speak. I represent Alden North Parish Council, who strongly object to this modern design of the proposed dwelling and feel that it will never settle into the rural and traditional landscape of the village. Ardingworth lies within the Rockingham Forest area. In the recently published Northamptonshire Countryside Guide, Design Guide, sorry, written in conjunction with the CPRE, the following building guidelines are recommended. Building style. New buildings should draw their basic design principles from the scale, form, materials and detail of the local vernacular. This clearly this application does not comply. Building materials, walling and roofing materials should be selected which are traditionally used in the area in general. This application again is not comply. Roofing. Materials are an essential part of this distinctive character of the county. The roof covering in a new development should be carefully selected to ensure the character of the area is not compromised by the use of inappropriate materials. This again does not comply. Windows. Careful consideration should be given to the window type, size, position and details. Windows used in new development should, not, should reflect the local characteristics. Again, this does not comply. 
doors and canopies in the building should reflect the character of those traditionally used in the area. Again, this does not apply. Chimney stacks. Chimney stacks are a prominent feature, commonly found throughout the county, and play an important architectural role in the composition of the building. The, their inclusion on new buildings should be considered. I think it does. The end of the guide, and to quote, was to protect and enhance the character of existing settlements and maintain local distinctiveness. Any proposal for development within the county should demonstrate that a plan has been taken of the context in which this, it is to be situated and must show appreciation and understanding to the local character. The Parish Council feel very strongly that these guidelines should be gut, should be considered and the listed building sorry, and those listed in the village design statement, and that the committee should refuse permission for this application. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Wilkinson is for the proposal. Thank you. Um, the proposed dwelling is an unashamedly modern dwelling of a high class design by a renowned architect to practice. Arthingworth is not a conservation area village, and as can be seen from any site visit, has a plethora of styles and designs with a majority of 20th century speculative housing. This proposal, on the other hand, is a bespoke design for the site for a specific owner-occupier. Indeed, they want to join their son and daughter who live in the village. The design is fully, fully future-proofed for non-ambulant people. There is one listed building referred to earlier uh, at Bosworth House, about 60 metres away, which is slightly visible beyond a road, brick wall, and trees uh, which are on the site, particularly a large sequoia. The proposal can have no influence on the setting of the listed building. As the report says, there are no technical issues which would have a negative bearing upon your decision. It is true that the application has excited concern from some local residents. As the committee report identifies, um, and the officer, a number also support the scheme. The parish council and their representations uh, were very concerned about the proposal being contrary to the village design statement, albeit this is a non-statutory document and has very limited materiality to any planning decision. The BDS, village design statement, actually draws out matters of style about being sympathetic to existing houses and in keeping with the rural location. Interestingly, the illustration in the village design guide is on page 20, actually shows modern and distinctive 20th century housing. I appreciate you probably can't see this from there, but trust me, I'm a doctor. That's an attempt at a joke. Um, in truth, the village contains a whole range of eclectic styles. This proposal is equally true of its time, like the other late 20th century housing, except it's now in the 21st century, and as set out in paragraph 60 of the National Planning Policy Framework, and I quote, planning policies and decisions should not attempt to impose architectural styles or particular tastes, and they should not stifle innovative originality and initiative to conform to certain development forms or styles. Um, in my opinion, the proposal is totally acceptable. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Right, members. Councillor James first again. Thank you, Chairman. I am. Um, I must admit, I'm quite alarmed at this uh, particular application. Uh, I've lived not far away from a house like that uh, in Bartmont C, in Hampshire, for about seven. And uh, it was such an awful looking thing. I could see it in the distance, the back of the pine trees. It was an awful looking thing. And in the end, uh, the guy who owned it had a roof put on it. And it made all the difference. It, did. it ceased to be. We used to call it the airport building, because that's what it was. There's also another one similar to that, I believe, in, in Western Fays and around the church way. Here, where it was built by the... Bassett and Loke, 
to about a decade of time. Um, but as for putting it in this village here, it's completely incongruous. It really is. It doesn't fit in at all. In and what is the point of having village design studies and all the other plethora of uh, supplementary documents if we don't take note of what they say? If this were an application for a house like that in the middle of a disused World War II airfield, then I would say, fair enough, you know, and, and pay attention to its uh, architectural merits and all the rest of it. But in that location there, it does not fit. It stands out, in my opinion, as a potential block in the landscape. And Thank I you. recommend that we go against officers of advice. Thank you. Do you have a second that? Um, I think you are first, Vice right, Chairman, by a microsecond. Okay. <coughs> yes, um, I'm against it because it does go against the village design statement. And these are important documents to villages and neighbourhood plans. They're not something just to be put to one side when someone doesn't agree with them. Uh, villages agree with them, and I think we should uh, take that on board, not just dismiss it as uh, people seem to do. The, the flat roof, um, where was it? Uh, yes, yeah, one. I'm just trying to remember what they said now. Oh, yes. And the flat roof format will undoubtedly be a departure from the norm within the village. Mm. Well, there isn't anything like that in the village anyway. So, absolutely correct. It's a one off. Uh, so, I don't think that should be, um, just on that point alone, it shouldn't go forward. The design, there's so much mention of design in here. The application building is an example of modernist architecture, which is not a feature of the village. Um, there are other ones in that as well. Uh, the current proposal is for an individual bespoke dwelling in an overtly modernist style. I mean, I'm not sure how many more things we need to actually discuss. Um, the only other point I'd make is, when I was in Miami this year, I didn't see many houses like that, I must admit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys, from Parker. I just wanted to address the balance, really, on something that's been said about these houses in villages. This is East Farnham, an eight and a half decade flat roof, roof house, right on the edge of the village, juxtaposition with similar brick properties, etc. And that's actually now grade two of this building. Thank you. So although people have said you never kind of see this in the village or in the village around it, well there's an example that you there really. So I just thought to be fair to everyone, I would show you an example where it's actually considered as such architectural merit to achieve listed status. Chair, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wesley. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, listen I've listened to this. It's uh, first of all I was thinking, yeah, that's to be honest, it's not, not my taste. That's uh, sort of sitting there a little bit. You think it stands out like a sore thumb, but of course that is that is a generated picture, which doesn't actually help it, does it? And then you start to look around the pictures of the village, and it's it's an it is an eclectic mix of buildings. And I understand the concerns about village design statement, but there are all sorts of buildings in this village. I mean, that's, you know, that's not an attractive. That's not an attractive. Uh, particularly attractive property either. I mean, it's not horrible, but it's, you know, you can argue that stands out as well. And, you know, I think making judgments on, uh, on the aesthetic of it like that is, is such a personal view. And I don't think we should be doing that. And I think on balance, I think uh, I think I would trade up to the Thank you, Councillor Wesley. Councillor Robertson. Thank you, Chair. Basically, uh, I think I agree with that statement, but um, personally, I don't like it. It's uh, and this is all getting down to a matter of personal taste, isn't it? So uh, now, is that a genuine planning ground for refusal, or is it not? Um, it just looks to me that the roof is missing. Thank you, Councillor Ritchie. I, I have a slight sympathy with Councillor Robertson's view. Um, it may be that in an artist's impression, it looks too new and too point. But it strikes me that you know we're not talking about a sort of chocolate box style of village. 
Um, I'm normally quite critical of the way that our, 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 our pictures that we look at on the screen float around so much without coming out getting a proper look at what they are. But looking at the diversity of what is there in Arthingstone, I you know, it's not a conservation area. I mean, that's, you know, that is accepted. Of course, there's got to be a recognition that, um, you know, that local views have got to be listened to. But surely villages in Northamptonshire and anywhere else evolve in terms of what they are. The houses that were there were perhaps considered eyesores at the time that they were actually built. You know, things move on. Um, there is nothing particularly precious about the area. Um, it sounded as if sometimes it was being criticised because the house was going to have windows in it. And, you know, of course there are windows in which people look out. And if you happen to live in a village, then it's very difficult to look out in a village without overlooking somebody else's garden or somebody else's property. Um, I just, I just not, don't feel happy with the argument that's been put against this particular house. I, I, I would, I would almost like to see a condition that it should be green rather than white or something like that. <laughs> but on the other hand, I just, I just don't see any, any strong ground for saying that you know officers' advice should be rejected in this. Thank you, Councillor Ritchie. Yes, sir. Can I ask um, the council officers if we were to say no, is there a very strong chance that that would be overruled on appeal? Um, <coughs> I wish I could answer that. Uh, I mean, it's a bit of an option, to be honest. I mean, you have said correctly, but to a point, it is down to kind of personal, personal taste. Ties. And obviously, I mean, the planning inspector will be the ultimate arbiter, if you like, if this goes to appeal. And the planning inspector will, will have a view, but as we've said, they'll also have to have regard to the development plan, any other material considerations, including the National Planning Policy Framework, which both I and Mr Wilkinson have reminded you of about <coughs> individual design shouldn't be just ruled out because it's individual design. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know really, it depends what way to the inspector decides to give to all those considerations, which is really what you guys have got to do as well, I suppose. We as officers have obviously come down on the side of thinking that it's acceptable. But I understand why people think it's not acceptable. That's partly why I showed you that one in East Farnton, to be honest. Because there's proof that we've got a flat roof, Art Deco house in our district, sitting in a village environment on the edge of the village, in a very prominent site there at East Farnton, sitting on the top of the hill. And um, when um, English heritage that were back in the day contacted us and said, Do you got any uh, decent art deco buildings in your district? I said, Yeah, there's one I know of. And as soon as they looked at it, they went, Wow, that's amazing, we're listing that. So that's been my listed building. So I was just saying about what do people think about that when it was put up in the 1930s in the village? Yeah, there's somebody else that said they probably said, God, that's hideous and it's totally out of character. Yeah, you know, 80 years later, it's a listed building. So it's all very subjective. We have recently lost one as well, which is a shame really, but right on the edge of Glen Malton, as you go into Northampton, where it literally crossed to the boundary of Northampton, it used to be a flat roof dark deco house. But unfortunately that one wasn't listed and they let it get into a total state of disrepair until it fell to bits and that's now kind of been demolished and replaced with a more modern property. But again, that was in a row of semi-detached brick houses sitting right on the edge of Malton. So they are, you know, they are dotted about the district, so to say, you know, not, they might not be in this particular village, but you know, they have happened from time to time because that's been the style of architecture at the time, that's been the style of architecture that person wants to build on that plot that they bought. So it's not the nineteen thirties, you know, we're into the different century, but it's a similar thing basically. So but it has got similar characteristics to that flat roof, white render style <coughs> of art deco type, type property. So, so it's a subjective judgment and who knows which way an inspector will get. Okay, Councillor Longley. Yeah, um, thank you Chair. Um, I, I'm really quite surprised that um, this application has come in um, as it's come in because um, there's already approval for two, two houses on it and um, the argument here <coughs> this evening is all about the style of the building, not the fact it's going from two houses to one house. 
had the applicant come in and <coughs> put a proposal up that um, was just one house, and um, I don't think there'd been any problem about it. What we're arguing about is, 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 the, is the look of it. And it seems an odd thing to me that um, if I was wanting to move to that village, um, I wouldn't want to have six neighbours all in the lane um, uh, against my, my building. So I would have thought the applicant would have been, uh, would have been a brighter move to come in with a design that his neighbours or his future neighbours would be happy with. That certainly would be my approach on that. So um, I think the design, my personal view is the design is out of place in that village. However, there may not be any planning reasons for voting against it or turning it down. I would have thought you look to the applicant to say, well, look, I want to live with these people and uh, maybe he might want to rethink it. Thank you. If there's no other comments, just I'll like go to, back to Councillor Jones. I'd just like to reinforce uh, what I said. If, if we don't have some regard to the village design statements, another supplementary plan and there would be nothing to, to stop anyone putting up a proposal for how to build it out of plastic lemonade bottles, which is perfectly feasible mm. and of architectural interest. It could be plastic lemonade bottles and uh, ooh, have a plastic straw roof made into thatch, some sort of thatch roof. Now, that would be uh, just as incongruous. So then we would say, well, we don't care what the villagers think. Uh, we think this is a modern house with architectural features and of importance or special interests or something like that. And we're overruling it. I don't think that would be terribly wrong. So I go back to what I said at the originally. It would be incongruous in that location. All vi most villages are haphazard. They develop as they've gone along and they're different styles. But they, more often than not, they're not outrageous styles. Thank you. Thank you. Right, I'll come back to the proposal. So we have a proposal, the application be refused, which has been seconded. All those in favour, please show. Thank you. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, seven, okay. Those against? Eight, two. two. So there must be an abstention somewhere then. Oh no, there's a person outside, yes. that's right. The application is, is refused for the given reason. Okay, come in.
Yeah, on the front elevation, although it's not readily visible from the public area, uh, a porch extension which attempted to replicate or uh, reflect the, uh, the various brickwork pattern. Uh, and some of you may take a view as to whether or not that is successful or not. Just go back to the street. Uh, the application property is on the right hand side, uh, and basically the, the end gable is unspoiled. Uh, apart from a single story extension, uh, which in our view is not readily visible from uh, outside, of the, uh, uh, outside of the site itself. It's quite a large plot. Just go into that. Next. Next. So it's a single story extension. Next one. Yes, that, so that's, that's the, the view from public areas and conservation areas. As you'll see, the the end gable is, is um, largely untouched from its original, and although there is a single story extension, uh, it's subservient uh, and doesn't detract from that end gable. The proposal is a two story extension to come out of that, that gable and to try and replicate uh, the existing pattern of uh, brickwork, etc. etc. And whilst it's acknowledged that it's an attempt to do that, uh, it, you'll see from the comments of the conservation officer. There are other ways of doing it uh, in terms of a, a low single story extension uh, and retaining the, uh, the original features of that particular gable, which, in our view, positively contribute to the, uh, the character and appearance of the conservation area. Uh, whilst acknowledging you know, the attempts by the, the applicant to, to replicate and repeat uh, the, uh, the pattern of brickwork, etc., on balance, our view is that there is harm to the uh, character and appearance of the conservation area. <coughs> Uh, and that harm is not outweighed by sort of public benefits uh, in terms of the provision of the, the additional uh, bedroom space, etc. Accordingly, we're recommending that the application be refused, Chair. Thank you, Ian. Um, we have a speech. Uh, Mr. Gurdjian. Yeah. Thank you very much for letting me speak. Um, we brought this property over four years ago. We brought it because we loved the outside of the building the brickwork and the stonework. Uh, what we are proposing is do it like for like. We're using uh, reclaimed bricks, the blue, the yellow, the red, ironstone, inherent bone pattern. It's not a listed building. It's a subservient design. It doesn't meet our needs and now. We want to in do this building. One of the concerns are the eyebrows on the extension. That is, we're copying that off the back of the house where the uh, original doorway was there and we want to replicate so it shows that there was something there so we're just trying to make it look like for like. Um, we're putting that it gets proposed. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you, sir. Um, Councillor Brand has indicated you'd like to speak. Uh, thank you, Chairman, and apologies for not letting you know previously that uh, I intended to speak on this application. Um, as members, Next time we'll, we'll get you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, as members will note from their paperwork, the uh, Parish Council is uh, agreeable to this uh, application. And as we've heard from the applicant, uh, they have in fact gone out of their way to respect the architectural character of the property as it stands uh, and to make every effort to respect the fact that they live in a conservation area. Um, Accordingly, whilst I uh, respect the fact that committee members could find planning reasons to turn this uh, down, um, I think that it's unlikely to, uh, to, to find uh, a better example of a planning application in a conservation area that should be given the green light. Uh, and therefore, I would ask committee members to go against officer's advice on this occasion and uh, approve the application. Thank you, Councillor I think you were first, sir. Thank you. Can I ask, please, um, someone showed a porch on the front and said that somebody had attempted to keep it in character with the building, which has obviously failed. Um, how <coughs> can we be assured that this extension will fit in with the character of the building? Well, to my mind, that's failed. <coughs> for you, Chairman, that, that's the reason why the application is being recommended for refusal. I mean, why is that? Uh, I thought that this is a genuine attempt to replicate, um, obviously, the, uh, the, the, the features of the, the existing building. In our view, 
the original picture should be left to contribute to the conservation of it. I'm trying to replicate with a modern uh, attempt. Uh, what provides the, the applicants with additional accommodation in order to preserve or enhance the conservation of it. Uh, so to that end, we, should, we feel that the end gable should be left as is. And the applicant should expect a <coughs> single story extension. Okay. Uh, through, through you, Chair, um, it's just a reminder really about the conservation area because it's not like any other planning application. It is, we should only be approving this if it is going to enhance the conservation area. And like in other applications, you know, a, a novel, you know, a, a straightforward planning application. And the private benefits to an individual doesn't own rule that. I mean, to, to answer your question, uh, so I mean, yes, if you're, if you're convinced that the materials will be an identical you know, match to what's there, the original materials, then you're entitled to come to an alternative view. In, in my experience, it's very difficult even using reclaimed materials <coughs> to get something that matches the original features. Our point is that that end gable, apart from the single story extension, remains pretty much untouched. And it's the end of a terrace that has been altered over time. I'll take a view of those alterations. But that gable provides and contributes to the charge and appearance of the conservation area. It's whether or not they attempt to replicate that with a modern extension, albeit trying to repeat the, the features of the existing building is acceptable. We say we say not. Members are entitled to come to a different view. Okay, Councillor Robinson. Councillor Robinson. No, thank you, Chair. Um, going back to the porch, is that on the same property or is that next door? <coughs> <coughs> Neighbouring property. Neighbouring also. Well, actually, disagree with my fellow councillor here. I do think it's an, it's, it's an attempt, at any rate, to, 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 to blend in. Of course, it's new, and the rest of the building is old. And as you quite rightly said, I am afraid we able to get a close match, particularly with the other bricks. Um, but um, and one would hope that uh, they would make a better job of that. Um, and uh, it does, from the design that I saw, um, keep, keep flicking through that one. Is it that? Yeah, that's that one there. They really are trying hard to uh, to match the um, the design features, and uh, I think I agree with um, uh, Council Brown when he uh, spoke. It's, uh, it is desirous in a conservation area. Thank you, Councillor Wesley. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm not seeing this as. Uh, Certainly not seeing this as an enhancement of the conservation area. I'm really, I'm really not. But I'm also not seeing it as overly detrimental. And um, when you actually look around at the, uh, the various add-ons and the bits and pieces on there, anyway, because other stuff has other stuff has happened. And, I, and for me, this isn't. This just doesn't go. It doesn't take it too far away. And it, Hopefully, it will be better than, the, than those existing uh, add-ons and buildings. There is, there's already a low-level extension, which is, which is sort of outside of scope, if you like. And we're, we're, we're sort of talking around, if you want, fiddling around the edges of this conservation area. And I think, you know, the applicant has stated that they they like the design, that they want to see it, they want to see it going forward. I think it's another case of the. 20 years, and nobody will know the difference, and still hopefully say it's an attractive, uh, an attractive building. Um, um, I would like to, I'd like to go against that. Proposal. It is. Yeah. Right, do you have a second? Yeah. Councillor Ewan. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think I agree with Councillor Robinson. Um, There are two ways of looking at yet another potential harm to an already damaged building. It can be seen as being past saving, or alternatively, that the proposed change would be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Well, obviously, uh, Mr. Gudgeon or the applicant uh, are trying to do the best they can to be sympathetic with the building that has been damaged the road in the past. It's not what it was. And it's not our place to try and take it back to what it was. We're trying to do the best we can within the scope of planning law. 
Um, so I feel that this is a case where I'm not being awkward tonight. I haven't got out of bed on the side where we ought to go against officers of this is on the periphery of Newnham. It's not right down in the, uh, the centre of Newnham or down in the old stony park near the church. It is on the periphery. It's a little bit mixed up there. And as you can see, it is, has considerably changed over the years with that extension and that garage there, um, which is hardly an attractive feature, that door. Uh, so I would say in this particular instance, we would only be doing the right thing by going against officers' advice and allowing this application. Thank you, Captain <coughs> James. That's Robin Swift. Well, I have nothing to, to add. Everything was said, so we could go to the vote if you wish. And um, we've got a few more speakers yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um Just a question, Chair. If you go back to the, the diagrams, the plans of what is proposed, the, the gable end, uh, diagram on the left has got a lot of writing in it. Can you just tell us roughly what that is all about? Well, it basically says to you, Chairman, that we'll do and copy everything that's on the original bill. The, it, 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 it specifies the, the sort of brickwork that will be used. Well, yeah, yeah. As you see from the notes, it says we'll build. Yeah, we will see, attempt yeah. to replicate the, the layers of brickwork and stonework yeah. that are existing in the existing building. Part of this thing is really about the execution of it, obviously, if you agree with the principle of it. The danger you've got is if you get it wrong, it's gone. I mean, that's our concern, really. Having seen what's been done on the porch, I don't think that's a risk we're prepared to take. But that is effectively what, what's at stake here. You want to destroy the original when it's gone, it's gone. Or you say, no, we will keep what's left. So I can have an alternative thing to store it in this because it will be gone. A partial single story extension, which is totally incongruous with cottage using that stone, uh, stone that's done in But I'm saying that is really our concern. But we are, as I said, supposed to be preserving or enhancing the conservation area. And if you if you end up with something that's worse than what was there, you fail that test, really. And that's a, we've seen a site, we've seen what's been done on the porch as an attempt on the <coughs> lake. I'm sure when they did that, they said they were going to do it in matching materials, really. Well, you know, we've seen what we've seen what they've done. So if it ends up looking like that, I don't think that's going to preserve or enhance the conservation area or anyway. Get through you, Chairman. The, what's the one may have view of the porch? The porch is not readily visible from any public parts of the conservation area. So it could be argued the porch doesn't impact <coughs> on the conservation area. This is a prominent gable that will be readily visible within the conservation area. And the, you know, the judgment is, is what's proposed, albeit a, a very genuine attempt to replicate the, the original features of the existing building. Uh, preservation or enhancement of the conservation area. You're entitled to come to your view. Right, we have a proposal, the application be approved, and which has been seconded. Um, all those in favor? That proposal, please show. Those against? Can you do can you do that again? Yeah. All those in favour? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sure. 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 Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Right, and those, those against was two, wasn't it? Yeah. Two. So that leaves an abstention somewhere then, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. right, the application is approved. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to give you that. I'm sure, the, I'm sure the proposal for refusal will give them.
you would do so initially, just to make sure that you've got the right people on the job, and um, that it would tail off after a while, because you wouldn't trust them if you saw them. Yeah, maybe not. They've got material for lighting in the first place, so they're going to carry on using the same materials. But personally, if I'd gone out and I was dealing with that forge, but I'd see that yellow brick, I'd see it straight away. Well, you can take that that yellow brick now, because that is not right in that particular incident. For for you, Chairman, um, if members are minded to to, uh, recommend conditions, one would be to actually construct a sample panel before the start of any work. Yeah. 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 That yeah. panel will enable the materials to be used to be properly assessed in terms of the coursing of the materials used mm-hmm. and how it's put together. So and basically the work that should be in accordance with the sample panel. Well, you want to specify a size of sample panel? Well, again, again but, I mean, it would need to take account of the various, <coughs> various layers that you've got. Something like 1.2 by 1.2. It's got to take account of all those different materials and how they all relate to each other really. So if we say a sample panel that takes into account all the materials and all the styles and all the, styles, all the, styles, all the building techniques including the heavy weight stone that's got to be put in there. Are you happy with that committee? Yeah. Yeah. Okay so the application is approved subject to that condition. Yeah, that's right. What have you got to do? 
and I don't see how you can ask but against that in, in this instance. So yes, I'm happy to second this. Thank you. With no Yes. I just wanted to make a comment, Chairman. There is a reference in the uh, report to objectors suggesting that this might lead to um, conversion into permanent dwellings if the holiday let is unsuccessful and members should be aware, and I'm sure they are, that that's not yeah. at all for our consideration yeah. here. We are dealing with this application now. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter what you think about it, what it might end up as. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, I, I have nothing against my field. Um, <laughs> but, you know, if you go on a holiday there, you could conceivably have a reason for going for a couple of nights. <laughs> but uh, condition 10 says that, or sorry, condition 11, no person should occupy the accommodation for a period of three calendar months. That, I mean, that's clearly talking about a, you know, a short term let rather than a holiday let. And but if you have a whole succession of these three month lets, you're, you're essentially talking about um, you know, that building being permanently occupied as if it was left to you know, as if it was owned and occupied by a single person in terms of traffic movements, in terms of everything else. And I, I, you know, I, I, I just wonder for the <coughs> three months, is there any reason why we say three months? And what's more, is there any way in which we can, um, you know, in which we can uh, and effectively going to monitor it. I mean, all this comes up again and again. I mean, uh, but, but you know, if I if I if I wanted to live in this particular bar and it was devious, and the bigger one you can have four people, one who is the you know one who rents for the first three months, the next person for the second three months, and so on. What mechanism have we got for actually making sure that that does not happen? There is a condition again. <laughs> Chairman, through you, the, the, the conditions have been used fairly widely uh, across the district. Condition 12 requires the, the applicants to maintain an up-to-date register. So, to answer your question, if there are suspicions that people are living there who breach the conditions, we would require them to produce said register uh, to further our investigations. But I'm going to come back to the point, this is the application for you to determine all its merits. Previously, uh, quite possible. If the if the, the owner of the land had uh, constructed a, a, a field track under agricultural PD, we wouldn't be having this conversation because you'd have two dwellings there uh, without the need for planning commission. It is only by virtue of the fact that uh, they didn't have access that the prior approval was refused. Turning now back to the planning applications concerned, we have to consider it against our policy, uh, which was dealing with with the conversion of buildings near the countryside, which allow for conversions to holiday lets, etc. The council has given short term lets, has varied conditions on holiday lets to accommodate longer, longer lets. So that's consistent with the approach we've taken on other sites across the district. So in that sense, it's, it's in accordance with policy, uh, and there's no reasons to, to refuse that. The conditions that we have imposed are conditions that we have proposed elsewhere, uh, based on the legal advice we have previously, uh, and uh, just to you know, meet the various tests. Okay. Right. We have a proposal that the application be approved, which has been seconded. All those in favour, please show. No. Those against? <coughs> so one, one abstention. Noted, Councillor Ritchie. The application is approved. The next application is a delegated one. So we come on to the last application, which is 0423 Guildford. <coughs> Thanks. 
don't have to go through the school premises and they're not tied down to school times or term times or whatever it is. And they just want a little gate off the side of the road where there's already a, a little wooden fence that you'll see or post and rail fence and they just want to replace that with a gate that allows them to go in to the tennis court from the road. Now you might think, yeah, that's not a problem, but the real issue is the highway authority have said if they don't have a proper footpath, they might have specified the usual two metres wide back to presumably the edge of the school, because that's effectively where the hard surface ends. And I reckon it was about 75 metres long based on my measurements. If you don't have a 75 metre hard surface, two metre wide footpath back to uh, the edge of the village, uh, we think it's going to be too dangerous for people walking on the on the uh, grass verge. There should be some pro proper separation between pedestrians and, uh, and, and vehicles. So we've gone along with that highway advice, which is why we refused the delegated application and which is why we're recommending reviews of this application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chief. We have two speakers. Mr Aaron Neal from the Parish Council for the Good evening councillors, thank you for allowing us to speak. My name is David O'Neill, I'm a parish councillor. Speaking on behalf of the parish council, which is strongly in favour of the application, um, I am a member of the Royal, Royal Town Planning Institute. We support um, what Graham is going to say. I do note that in your committee report, the officer states there's currently a wide grass verge, which is uneven in its nature, and therefore, he says, it is unlikely that users will walk along a live carriageway. Whilst this may be the case in some locations, it's not the case here. Users of the only community playing fields, 200 metres further along that same verge, and others, use the regularly cut grass verge because it's the only access from the village. Your up-to-date completed sports facility strategy, 2017, identifies the strategic need for community tennis courts in Gillsborough and the opening up of the sports access to the academy school is a stated key priority and I formally confirm that your sports officer Mel Bland agrees with this. There is no cost effective way of achieving this apart from the use of the existing courts by the community as a new forecourt tennis facility costs £165,000. The access issue has only occurred due to the academy gating the whole of the campus. It's a fact that Northamptonshire Highways object to the proposal, and this is stated in your report due to the lack of a pedestrian footpath. And this has led uh, your offices to refuse on, say, policy GM2, which states that planning permission will normally be approved provided it has satisfactory means of access and has sufficient parking. Parking elements already covered, there's a 50 metre away car park. Now, uh, the word satisfactory access, it is important, as it clearly implies, and case law would support this, that it is a question of your plan balance, and, and, and that balance is for your judgment. This is clearly set out in the High Court by Lord Justice Lindblom, and it, it just may help that, uh, to note that he said such reports are not, and should be not, written for lawyers. But for you, councillors, who are well versed in local affairs, he says, and local factors, planning committees, he says, approach such reports using that local knowledge and much common sense. So that opportunity is more than a material consideration from you. You will know it's a point of planning law. So it is reasonable for your committee, Mr Chairman, to use your local knowledge and much common sense in seeing that the tarmac curved, highway compliant, formal footway costing £23,000 is not necessary and that the current and extensive use of the three metre wide verge over a very short distance is on planning balance a satisfactory means of access and so it does meet your same policy GM2. Thank you. Thank you sir. Back to Thank you. Good evening. My name is Graham Metcalf. I have lived in the village for 35 years. I am a member of the Hillsborough Tennis Club and I am a parish councillor. I speak as the agent on behalf of the applicant. The members and supporters of the Gillsborough Tennis Club and the many others interested in playing tennis in our village, it just does not make sense for the granting of planning permission to depend upon the provision of a two metre wide footway costing 
23,000 pounds. <coughs> the design and access statement that you have read makes clear the background to this proposal, includes a health and safety plan, and offers a detailed justification for the granting of planning permission. May I direct your attention to the screen? In fact, the um, footway has been ably um, uh, illustrated. If I may go on. The existing three meter wide highway verge seen here is used by locals on a daily basis as a footway for dog walking, jogging, horse riding, and access for all, which includes the primary school children, to the Gillsborough playing fields and for the public footpath to the Cold Ashby Road. At 250 metres in length from the Academy forecourt, it has been used without incident for decades and is still accepted locally as a safe haven in a rural environment where the local authority has not provided a paved footway. The West Haddon Road only suffers traffic congestion at the Academy's opening and closing times. It should be noted that the cost of providing a two metre wide footway from the Academy to the playing fields is estimated at £66,000. Could this be the reason why the <coughs> local highways authority has not provided a footway? The cost of providing the proposed new security gate and fencing is estimated at £3,000, a significant sum of money to be raised by a fledgling tennis club. Add to that the cost of the shorter footpath of 75 metres of £23,000 and the highly commendable community project, community project instantly dies. Can this be right when at national and local levels resources are overstretched, more needs more needs to be achieved for less, and the thoughtless waste of financial and human resources is an ever-increasing issue. Solutions demand imagination and positive thinking, with the appropriate adaptation of current standards to match the individual conditions. It just does not make sense to refuse this application this evening, when tomorrow, Villagers and frustrated tennis players will still walk this highway verge, well able to see six courts idle when the school is closed. What will have been achieved? Please now approve this application. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We've got three local members tonight. One outside the committee who's going to speak first, Councillor Miller. <coughs> Thank you, Steve Chairman. Um, speaking on behalf of uh, Long Buckley Ward, where I represent, and I've represented Gillsborough Chairman since 1998. Used to live in the village for some eight years, so I know the site very well indeed. In fact, I was a governor once of Gillsborough School, which is now Gillsborough Academy. I have to say, I think the two speakers so far have spoken really well, and I just want to make uh, refer the committee to the um, assessment of the application in the report, where it says quite clearly there that the um, the courts are going to be used after school is closed. And, when you, and the reason I asked for this to come to committee, Chairman, is I wasn't happy about Highways Advice taking this into account as an application and that site, which I know so very well. And if you look at the reasons on the, the reasons for refusal, it says there resulting in pedestrians walking along the heavily traffic, trafficked live carriageway. Well, the truth is, Chairman, the only time that road's busy is when the school's open. And we're talking about outer school hours here, so I don't understand. I mean, that, I know that road very well because I've driven along it so many times. That road, the only time that road is really heavily trafficked is during the pickup time and the drop off time for school. During the rest of the time, you can see that's a country lane. Gillsborough's not a big village. You get traffic coming through, not like a, you know, not like a West Haddon region <laughs> just down the road. So there's not a lot of through traffic. And in fact, many years ago, uh, there's an opportunity for Gillsborough to have a bypass around it and it refused because the amount of through traffic isn't great apart from drop-off time and pick-up time at school. So I think personally, I think the highways have gone a bit over the top on this. Uh, that, uh, as we said already, the actual side there where people walk along has been used for many, many years. I've been involved in the village for 25 years. Never been a problem. And putting a, a tarmac there may not actually prevent, if a car was to veer off the road, it wouldn't prevent that accident happen, happening. So I personally think, Chairman, that we, you should, your committee should really consider supporting this application because it would be, very, it would be a great you know, shame for the tennis club, which clearly can't afford 
23,000 pounds uh, to put a, a tarmac path in there. And for a village like Gillsborough, where these sort of facilities are needed, uh, there's no regular bus service. I think it's very important that we support our villages and support the amenities within those villages. And I'd be really sorry to see if this application was refused that the, uh, the tennis club will fold because they couldn't afford to actually comply with the request of the highways authority. And I wouldn't be recommending approval if I felt there was a real highway issue. I don't attempt fate there, by the way, so I'm being careful there. But <coughs> over many, many years and no incidents, I think the people who are going to go after our school hours, it's not during school hours, where the traffic is a lot, lot lighter, I think hopefully there'll be no issues whatsoever, Chairman, and I hope committee can actually be minded to support the application. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you, Councillor Miller. Councillor Longway. Um, yes, thank you, Chair. I'm, I'm not going to go on for very long because we've had three very eloquent speakers and I'm going to re you know, I would only repeat that. Um, this is a risk and reward situation, isn't it? The risk is pretty low. It's been used for decades, to my certain knowledge, and the reward is very high, it seems to me. Um, I'll say no more than um, I'm going to propose that we accept the application um, with, uh, without a no more Thank you. And I, being the third member, I'm going to second this as well. Um, I, they're also their county council as well as their district council, and uh, I think the highways are expecting too much. If they want it, they should have provided it themselves ages ago. So I will second it willingly. Councillor Ritchie. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'm speaking only in hope that something of this discussion might be noted and fed back to the highways. I feel quite disgusted. The Highways Department have taken no interest for years in a very much narrower and much longer pavement that young children need to use between Middlemore and the rest of town on their way to school and back. They have had no interest in putting up a barrier. And yet here, when you're talking about people who are essentially adults, young adults, certainly people who are going to school, going along a much broader path um, on a much quieter road, and they are kicking up a fuss. I, you know, I just feel, uh, if it wasn't a joke, I'd be tempted to say that this should be abolished. <laughs> you're, not the, you're not the only one that said that on this committee. I've said it, um, lots of members have said it. Uh, they're inconsistent with their views, I might Right, anyone? Sorry, Chair. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I know this area very well. I've performed many times in the school. All my children went there and went on successfully elsewhere. The only observation I wanted to make was that I note from the drawing that there are steps to this pedestrian access from the road, which means that people like me in wheelchairs won't be able to use it. Um, well, I'm sure the applicants are listening to that. Um, they could provide a wrap. Can one of you quickly answer that in five seconds where there'll be something yes. so a disabled person can get it? Uh, yes. uh, this is uh, the best guesstimate at the moment for uh, level change, uh, but I see no reason why that ramp access can't be accommodated. There's, there's plenty of it. We've, we've endeavoured to negotiate this arrangement with the Academy. I'm sure on the strength of, of, of that request, you could, you there will be no difficulty because uh, the land itself to the south there, or to the bottom of the drawing, is, is so to speak, doing nothing. So it, it, can, be, it can be done. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Councillor James. Yes. Uh, I, I think a few of what has been said that uh, you know, we ought to uh, uh, approve this application, but uh, I'm mindful of the fact that some years ago, about probably 15 years ago, uh, at Greens Norton Road, Toaster, a young girl was coming out of school and uh, to walk to her home in Greens Norton. We walked on the verge uh, down at Greens Norton, which is quite narrow, and put one foot up. Here's a little bit different. Uh, the verge is wider, and uh, we're told about the traffic. It's 
exactly the feeling of the local members. Yeah. Right, we have a um, proposal on the application be uh, I just I just want to make sure, Chairman, what the proposition's been made. Um, because there's been some case law recently, although we officially done enough to give reasons for approval. The case law's now saying if you're overturning officers advice you ought to give a reason. Think thinking about it. One of the options that was open to us was to approve this and put a condition on requiring the footpath our thoughts, but we would have said we didn't do that because it was unreasonable um, to put it on because we knew it was too expensive and we didn't really think they'd want to do it, so that since it was unnecessary, and I think that's where members are coming from. You're saying to us, we don't think it's reasonable and we don't think it's necessary, yeah, that's right. So yeah. that can be your reason for going against officers' advice, basically. Yeah, and we're happy with that. And the other thing was just to say, obviously, since the point's been raised by Councillor Chapman, do you want us to add something kind of about details of a disabled? The applicant seemed keen that they can probably do access for all of his speech. Okay, now we go to the vote then. Uh, the proposal that the application be approved. All those in favour, please show. 11. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not sure what that means. I can't second it, not vote for it. The application is approved. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the planning committee tonight, so you can put your coats on and go out in the cold. <laughs> 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 <laughs>